Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. It's been a while since I had done a complete day. My husband was leaving for a very short trip and on the weekend me and kids were at home. I actually was not in the mood of cooking so much, but I had no other option but cook. In fact, I wanted to take kids out for playing, but as you all know, the world is on high alert of coronavirus. So, we are taking precautions of avoiding public places or eating out and such. I already shared a few pictures on my Instagram of the dishes that I had prepared on this day. So, do keep watching to get the recipes and I hope you like this video as well. It was a beautiful morning. I always love to look out of the window as soon as I wake up, be it any time. On this day, kids had no school, but exams were going on and it's still on. I normally wash blankets during weekends. If necessary, then weekdays too. On weekends, I tell my kids to take shower before breakfast. I feel they remain fresh and ready for the rest of the day. And later at night, a shower before bedtime to get a good sleep. I didn't want to spend too much time in the kitchen, was in no mood of cooking very special dishes, utilized whatever was readily available. Kids love waffles and I didn't want to cook a separate one for me. In cakes and waffles, I don't like eggs. So I prepared a healthy version that's eggless whole wheat waffles with a drizzle of grape syrup. I anyway had two very ripe bananas lying in the basket, so made use of that. You need lukewarm milk for this recipe and to get melted butter, I added a piece of it in the milk so that I can add it together and it melts along with the milk. To the mashed banana, added 1 cup whole wheat flour. Then 2 tablespoons corn flour or cornstarch. One and a half teaspoon baking powder. You may add white sugar, I used brown here. Around quarter cup and then quarter teaspoon salt. Give a mix. To the lukewarm milk and butter, added one teaspoon vanilla essence. And add the wet ingredients to the flour mix. You may add water if you find the batter very thick. Cover and let it rest for 5 to 10 minutes. If you don't have waffle maker, you can make pancakes with this. Spread some butter or oil onto the waffle maker. I added quarter cup more of water to loosen the batter. So that's the consistency you need. Add one enough to two ladle of batter onto the waffle maker. Now to drizzle over the waffles or the pancakes, I made a grape syrup. 
I had these grapes in the fridge. You may even prepare with any berries. To almost one cup of grapes, add a half to three fourth cup of sugar and just a squeeze of lemon. Once the grapes are soft and cooked, take it out and let it cool down. Blend the grapes in a blender. You may use as such or strain it just like how I did. That's milk for my boys with a tablespoon of Nutella for each. Spreading some Nutella onto the waffles. Sprinkling some icing sugar. That's whipped cream from a bottle. And a drizzle of the grape syrup. And that was our breakfast. After 15 to 20 minutes of completing breakfast, I ask them to study for some time and me joining them for any help. I usually make them write and learn rather than just reading the lessons. I move to the kitchen for lunch preparation. Dishes were kept unwashed after breakfast and I normally use the dishwasher on such days when I feel low or lazy. Add the syrup left so storing in a glass jar. And that goes into the fridge. This remains good for at least 3 weeks. I don't know who but someone had asked me how I clean the waffle maker. I don't know if this is the right way. I switch on the waffle maker, add some water and close it for few minutes. Then switch it off, wipe off while it's still hot. Need to be very careful but I do it when hot. It becomes very clean. I clean the sandwich maker the same way. Lunch was very simple, rice and a curry using dried fish. Now dried fishes are normally very salty, so to cut down the saltiness, put in water for 10 to 15 minutes. For the curry, you'll need garlic, green chilies, ginger, shallots and such.
we use puni rice for lunch. Here I've taken 5 to 6 shallots, 4 to 5 garlic cloves, a small piece of ginger and 5 to 6 green chilies. I crush these in a mortar and pestle. Using a clay pot which I love to cook dishes, adding the crushed ones into the pot. Here for a change I used ripe mangoes, you may use raw mango as well. I wanted to check out how it would go and it definitely had a good and different taste. My boys loved it, especially Rihan. My mom makes with raw mango and I'll share that in another video. Add the dried fish, half teaspoon turmeric powder, one teaspoon red chilli powder, one teaspoon coriander powder, salt and 2 cups water. And let that cook on medium flame. For this you'll need 1 and a half cup grated coconut. Add little warm water and blend to a smooth paste. In between, I had asked kids to again take the books for some time. Studying continuously will only burden them, so I give intervals. Once the mango is soft and fish pieces are cooked, add the coconut paste and some water if needed. Let that boil. Meanwhile keeping the pan ready for tempering. Add some mustard seeds into heated coconut oil, then a pinch of fenugreek seeds, some curry leaves, and few dried red chilies. Quarter teaspoon Kashmiri red chilli powder for extra colour and flavour. Mix for a couple of seconds and add to the curry. Keep covered without mixing for 2 minutes and then give a mix. And that was our lunch curry. Didn't cook anything else. It was just rice, curry, papad, and pickle. For dinner, I was preparing chicken lollipops using chicken wings. We don't get the ready-made ones here, I haven't seen any. Anyway, I thought to show you how to prepare the lollipops using the wings. So for that, I wanted the sink to be very clean though I need to clean it later. Here's a wing, cut off the end part. If you have seen my video on cutting a whole chicken, you probably would know where the joints are and how to cut easily. 
now cut here as there is a joint there too and it's easy it would be really easy if you use a knife that has sharp edges similar to this taking this part first hold the bone at the bottom and scrape the flesh to the top you get to see the bone very clean gently pull over and bring it inside out do it gently to do this you may even use a cotton cloth and that's a cute little lollipop now this part here you can see the two bones one big and the other small just a light cut to separate on top and then gently pull and you can see the bone this way you may scrape towards the top and easily pull off the bone from it it's a thin bone you need to remove so be careful of that and for the rest pinch onto the bone and scrape upwards again gently pull inside out you get the other lollipop from the same wing so these are the two lollipops from one wing now for a marinade into a blender add 3 to 4 shallots 3 cloves of garlic and a small piece of ginger then go some curry leaves 1 and 1/2 teaspoon kashmiri red chili powder 1/2 cup grated coconut squeeze of half a lemon salt a pinch of fennel seeds and some whole black pepper corns i didn't have coriander leaves with me if you have do add a handful add some water and blend to a paste now i didn't add turmeric just to not stain my blender lid so that goes half to 3/4 teaspoon turmeric powder and 2 tablespoons coconut oil that's optional mixing in one egg then add the chicken lollipops and mix well you may skip the coconut but it really adds a good taste and smell while frying keep it in the fridge until needed preparing cheesy garlic breads for an evening snack into a bowl add soft butter chop in some parsley or coriander leaves you may use any i had only parsley with me at that time then goes in garlic of course around 3 to 4 cloves quarter teaspoon oregano quarter teaspoon dried basil red chili flakes salt i have used unsalted butter if you are using salted one do add extra salt accordingly heat a tawa add some shredded mozzarella cheese on the bread slices onto another slice spread the butter mix place on top of the cheese as shown place upside down carefully then spread some butter on top then after a minute cook on to the other side too keep the flame low don't burn it let me show you how i make frothy coffee this is just for beginners many of you might be knowing it here i'm using 1 and 1/2 teaspoon instant coffee powder add a tablespoon of hot boiling water and here i'm using my electric whisk and whisking the hot milk too adding the milk gently into the coffee i'm not a coffee art expert and that's the frothy coffee and that's our evening break last part of the day and that's preparing dinner
I had few pita bread or the kubus left over from previous day. So made use of that and prepared egg kuttu kubus or whatever you may call it. So for that slice three small onions. Took out the marinade from the fridge. And those are green chilies chopped. I together kept the pan for kuttu kubus and kadai for frying the lollipops. So the work time is reduced. Adding some coconut oil. You may use any oil or ghee. Saute onion and green chilies first. Just before frying the chicken, add 2 tablespoons of corn flour. This adds crispiness to the chicken. Mix and keep aside. When the onion is soft and translucent, add 2 medium sized tomatoes chopped. Mix well and let it cook on medium low flame. Time to fry the lollipops. Hold on to the bone and drop the pieces. Add some salt to this. Add 1 tablespoon Kashmiri red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, mix well. Add some hot water and deglaze the pan. Add little at a time and that goes 1 cup hot water. Cover and keep on low flame. Gently pull the chicken pieces this way so that it doesn't lose the shape. Here I cut two big size pita breads into small squares. Adding 4 eggs to the masala and mix. Don't make it too dry. When the eggs have mixed a bit, add the pita bread pieces and mix. Check salt and along with that add some black pepper powder. Mix and it's ready. Now for a salad or you can even call it a dip for the lollipop. Into a bowl add 2-3 big spoons of curd. Here I am adding 2 teaspoons of thicka masala mayonnaise. You can use normal one. Then honey around 1 tablespoon few red chilli flakes then a small onion chopped along with parsley or coriander leaves mix well season with salt and pepper and a drizzle of olive oil and it's ready and 
and that's our dinner time. Do prepare these for your family, especially lollipop which kids would crave for more. And that ends today's vlog. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Do share your pictures and feedback on the recipes you have tried. See you with more videos. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.